Good afternoon, everybody. I was not here last week, and I missed you all. But I was away in sunny California with Corey, and I had lots of fun riding roller coasters, <laughs> um, which is really fun. Yeah. Um, so as Dimitri said, we are in the Psalms of Ascent. We are working through these psalms that um, Israel sang and recited as they pilgrim, they, they journeyed into Jerusalem uh, with. And um, two weeks ago, uh, Demetrius uh, t- took us through Psalm 120, and he talked about the de- being in the depths of despair and, and identifying those feelings and giving them to the Lord. And then last week, Annika took us through Psalm 121 and, and, and walked us through how to um, look up when we're in that depth of despair, to look up and trust God and to take those steps forward in the journey. And today I get to talk about Psalm 122, and it's about the journey, and it's about journeying together and as a unified community. And um, I'm so excited to be able to talk about this because we have been through a rough couple years, haven't we? (laughs) It's been rough. It's been we've been we've struggled. We've we've been isolated from one another. We've 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 been anxious. We've uh, we've we've just been going through a lot as a as a as a city, as as a community, as as a, a state, as a country, and the entire world has been going through a lot. Um, and what we see in Psalm 122 is that in order to come out of that depth, out of that despair, we have to do it as a unified community. We have to do it together. We can't do it in isolation because being together is an important part of being the community of God. Amen. So how do we be unified? How or why is it important? Uh, Let's look at Psalm 122 together. <laughs> so open up your Bibles to Psalm 122. Uh, if you haven't already, you can open your Bible. You can open your tablet, your phone. There's lots of ways we can read the word today. Isn't that great? <laughs> it's like it doesn't have to be a physical Bible. It's all over the internet. It, you can, there's so many different ways. So let's read Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let's go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. There, thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls, and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your good. Isn't that such a great psalm? It's so encouraging. The psalmist here is communicating that in the depths of the despair, and as we learn to place our trust in God, the community around us is an important part of the ascent. So as Generations Church, I, think th- I believe that this psalm has three encouragements for us as we move out of this despair, move out of this place of, of uh, isolation, out of being separated, and, and as we move into the presence of God and into the mission that God has given us as a church. Amen. The first encouragement is to take joy in our gathering. Take joy in gathering together. Number two, build unity. It's important to build unity in our church family. And number three, we need to pursue peace in each of our relationships. On the surface, all of these things seem like, yep, of course, that's great. That sounds good. But all of these things require humility. They require um, self-sacrifice. And they require a continual leaning on the gospel. And all three of those things can be quite difficult when you actually put them into practice. But when we begin to put them into practice, we find that there is so much joy being in the community um, that 
that it, so much joy that it brings to our hearts. And joy is a special gift from the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I love joy. Joy comes from a deep trust in the Lord. When we deeply trust God, like Annika talked about last week, we, it, being around other believers just brings us joy. And what the psalmist in Psalm 122 is communicating is that joy comes from gathering together as a community. So when I was younger, um, my family was deeply wounded by the church. And for a long time, being a part of the church, I, I, was still, I still went to church, but being part of the gathering and finding joy and gathering other, with other believers was not something that I really understood. Because I only went to church because it was, I knew it was important. I knew it was what God wanted, but fully engaging and fully participating was not something that um, I was vulnerable enough to do because I didn't want to be hurt again. And, but when I was 22, I went on a missions trip called the World Race and where I went around the world for 11 months and I traveled with 30 other people. And on this trip, I discovered the joy of being with other believers with a common mission. And I'll talk about a little bit more about that later. But one of the biggest things I learned is the importance of taking joy in gathering together, which is our first point. Take joy in our gathering. Amen. The psalmist in Psalm 20, 122 begins with proclaiming the joy that comes with being with those who also long to be in the presence of the Lord. Look at verses 1 and 2. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Other versions say, I rejoiced. I was overjoyed. I just couldn't help but exclaim hooray yeah. when other people said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem was where the Lord's presence dwelled. It's where the temple was. In the, in the temple is where God's, the room of God's presence when we are at our lowest point, after we identify and bring our feelings to God, after we look up and trust him while taking our steps on the journey, we look around and recognize we're not the only ones. We don't have to do this alone. We don't have to figure out the journey on our own. We don't have to be like, where should I step? Where should I go? We have others to lean on and we have others who can lean on us. Our journey to the Lord's presence is pursued with each other. The psalmist is eager to be in God's presence. Where there's peace, where there's love, where there's joy, where there's celebration, where there's no sin. And we don't, they don't, they're not wanting to do it by themselves. They are, want to do it as a community. Our feet are standing within your gates. We might as well, even though we're at the bottom, we might as well just be right there, God, because we just want to be in your presence right now. We all know what this feels like, right? <laughs> Over the last couple years, when, you know, when, when we were all shut down and, and the, sh the, the lockdowns happened and we had to stay in our homes and not gather together or we had to just be in tiny, tiny little groups. How exciting it was when they said, you could meet in church again. <laughs> Right? Yes. Right. I was, that was what I wanted. I was so excited. I longed for in-person gatherings. I rejoiced. I was like, yes, I can be with my people. It's like when we finally got to be here, it's like our feet were just waiting to get in. We're like, come on, let's be together. Come on. Right? There's joy to be shared when we pursue God together. Psalm 1611 says that, that God's presence is the fullness of joy. As the church, as the people of God, we are his temple. So we carry the Holy Spirit in us. And so when we are together, the fullness of joy and the fullness of God's spirit is celebrated together. The fullness of joy is being represented. So when I was on the world race, like I said, I was with a group of 30 people and we would split off into smaller teams and go travel into the country and just be in groups of 
five to seven people. But there was a special joy that happened when the whole group came back together at the end. We would gather for prayer. We were excited to pray together. We were excited to worship together. We were excited to encourage each other. These times were refreshment to our spirits as we came together as a unified group and just sought the presence of the Lord. We asked for prayer. We asked how we could pray for others. We were excited to spend time in worship. It was so exciting, and I cannot fully express how wonderful it was to have other people as equally excited to sing, to pray, and to even dance. To dance in the presence of the Lord. Because there was no judgment. If you, if you danced, if you spoke in tongues, if you didn't speak in tongues, if you, there was all kinds of things, the ways that people expressed worship in the God and, to God, and it was just exciting because we got to do it together. And that's what we wanted to do when we came back together. We are here to build each other up. We are here to help encourage each other when we're feeling down, to help point each other to Jesus. As we walk into our gatherings, whether it's on Sunday afternoons, whether it's weekly Bible studies, whether it's youth group, whether it's a young adult group, whether it's just lunch together, when we were with another person who loves Jesus, count it as joy because it's a privilege to walk into the presence of God with other believers as a community. That's why in Hebrews, the author says, let us consider how to stir up one another in love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Our gathering is so important as we ascend out of those deep, dark moments because we can lean on each other. We can catch each other if we fall. We can encourage each other when the journey becomes difficult because we help, keep each, our, keep, we help each other keep our eyes on Jesus. We serve a God who loves community, unity, and encouragement, and we need each other to keep our eyes on the Father. Life is full of pain, difficult things, destruction, devastation, and depression, and it's worse when we feel alone in it. I hate feeling alone in it. <laughs> but when someone else understands my pain, understands your pain, under really gets it, knows what it's like to be dead in sin, and they just really get they just really get it, and they come alongside and say, let me help. Let's do this together. Let's link arms. There's a joy that happens with that. With each step, each gathering, every time we meet together, our joy develops and strengthens. If I had my way, and the staff could attest to this in our staff meetings, I would do potlucks every week. I would have all of us live together in the same house. I, I, would, I want to see every, all of you every single day. Uh, because I want, to, I want to be with my church community all the time, as often as I can, because I need you. I need you to help me be a parent. I need you to help lead me in godly parenting. I need you to help lead me in being a godly spouse. I need you men to help my husband be a godly spouse. I need that. <laughs> I need all of you. I need your encouragement. I need your prayers. I want prayer nights and worship nights as often as we can. And what I want most is to have you there. Every single one of you. What would it look like, Generations Church, if our joy to gather was so strong that we could not get enough time together? What would it look like to the outside world? What would it look like to Gresham in a world where there's constant bad news? In a city where there seems to be a shooting every single day, when there's murder sprees and chaos, we need a place where joy is found. And that begins with us. So if you're struggling in the joy of being together, you aren't alone because all of us have felt that at one point or another. 
We're all human. But if you're in a place where you want that joy, you want that joy to begin and you want to see it, ask the Holy Spirit to help you see places where joy is found already. If, if you find joy in singing worship together, rest in that joy. If you find joy in the preaching of the word and reading the Bible together, find joy in that, rest in that joy. If you're, it's in prayer time and you find joy in praying together, rest in that joy. If it's in our fellowship and are just talking together before and after our gatherings, rest in that joy. Whatever portion of our gathering you find joy in, rest in it. And then ask the Holy Spirit to show you where joy is found in the other parts. The Holy Spirit doesn't want us to gather together because we have to. Or it, it gives us favor with God if we do. He wants us to gather because community is essential to the kingdom of God. And he created us to be in communion with him and with each other. It's an important part, an essential part of the gathering because it's the Holy Spirit's working in us and through us. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, which means it needs to be cultivated and needs to grow. It doesn't just get there on its own. We have to work on it. But joy can be quickly and easily destroyed if we gather together and there's dissonance or discord within the community. So for us to take joy in our gathering, we have to build unity in our church family. That's, that's the second encouragement, to build unity in our church family. It's difficult to have joy when there's tension, right? Right. Has anybody else been in the middle of a family dispute? <laughs> like, like, election seasons are particularly hard, right? Everybody has different ideas. It's just hard, and everybody's upset and angry. Um, it's upsetting. Being in that tension, it can be consuming. It can take over our thoughts, over our, our just everything in our mind. It can bring heartache, and it can bring sadness. The opposite of joy the Israelites were separated by tribes. They were a whole people, but each tribe had its own, nation, its own land, its own borders. They lived separate from each other. They married within their tribes and their clans. But when it came to worshiping the Lord, they were of one mind. They would travel together into Jerusalem where the Lord dwelled to give thanks to the Lord and celebrate what God had done for their people. Let's look at verses 3 through 5 in Psalm 122. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. It wasn't a big sprawling city where every house had 10 acres. They were cramped in there. To which the tribes would go up the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. There, thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Israel was, even though they were separated, they were unified when worshiping the Lord. The psalmist is revealing that joy is found in the gathering because all of the things that separate us, all of those things that, that in the world that can make us draw lines in the sand mean nothing when it comes to coming together to worship God because there's something bigger that unites us than all of those things that separate us. So when I was on the world race, uh, we had to be unified under a common goal. All of the people that I was traveling with, all of the people on my squad, like the 30 people that we were, we were called a squad, uh, we were from different states, different cities. In fact, we didn't meet each other until we all left on this trip. Um, we were from different states, different cities, different ethnic backgrounds. Um, some of us were uh, only Christians for a very short time. Some were Christians their whole lives. Uh, some were... Um, some were uh, Reformed or Baptist believers, some were Pentecostal believers. Uh, we had all kinds of things that would separate us. But we had to come together, even though we had so many differences, we had to come together to pro because we had a common goal of proclaiming Jesus and partnering with churches all around the globe in order to make the name of Jesus known. 
we had a common goal. We unified under that goal to help churches across the world pursue their goals of proclaiming Jesus to their cities and to their countries. Because all of our differences had to go away, had to be minimized in order to be unified from being one with Christ in pursuit of sharing him with the world. As a church, as Generations Church, we recently have developed a common mission, a common goal. And what is that? To be a life-giving community, serving those in need, making Jesus the main attraction. That is our goal as a unified body of believers. We can have different ideas about secondary theological issues. We can have different ideas about politics. We can have different ideas about how things should be done in our city or our country or our world. And we, can have, we have different ideas about all kinds of things all over this room. But in Generations Church, what unifies us as believers is so much bigger than any of those things. We want all kinds of people here, right? All ages, all races, all kinds of people worshiping Jesus under the common goal of serving those in need, being a life-giving community, and making Jesus the main attraction. And we can only do that if we let all of those other differences melt away and be unified under that goal and, and, and work towards it together. So look at verse 5 with me real quick. There, in Jerusalem, thrones of judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Did you know that whenever you see the house of David in scripture, it's usually a prophetic code for the coming Messiah? So this is pointing to Jesus. Jesus, our king, our Messiah, he alone is worthy of worship and adoration. All those who believe in him, we are made children of God through faith. That makes us a unified family. That's what brings us together. That's what unifies us as siblings. It gives us a reason to walk together, to link our arms into the presence of the Father. And we can't do that without Jesus. He went to the cross. He suffered death so that we could have peace with God. He pursued peace for us so that we could come to the Father without shame, without guilt, because as his children, we are unified under the work of the cross and the power of his resurrection. And because Jesus pursued peace between us and the Father, we have to walk in his footsteps doing the same thing, which is our third encouragement. We need to pursue peace in each of our relationships. <clears throat> That's so much easier said than done, right? <laughs> the psalmist is advocating in Psalm 122 that the movement into God's presence takes joy and unity and peace. Amen. So let's look at the last few verses, starting with verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. And for the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. So what does that mean for us? That means praying and pursuing peace within the church by praying and pursuing peace in each of our relationships in this room and with those who are not present in the moment. Pursuing peace is necessary for us to be unified. It's necessary in order for us to band together and come out of the depths, out of the despair, and move up towards the Lord. It means walking through issues with love and kindness. It means asking for forgiveness. It means being vulnerable in confrontation and being humble when confronted. It doesn't mean that we agree on everything all the time because unity and uniformity are not the same things. It means that we see each other as the bride of Christ first. We see each other as the bride of Christ before we see each other as political enemies, as uh, racially or ethnically different, 
as rich or poor, as male or f female, or anything in between in today's world. Pursuing peace also does not mean staying silent when there's trouble. It means confronting the trouble and doing the difficult work of being vulnerable, humble, and steadfast. When we are in relationships with others, we have to be willing to wade into the difficult waters and stand firm in the midst of other people's storms. Have you ever had a scrape or a cut somewhere on your body and had to put peroxide on it? Right? It stings, it bubbles, it hurts, it burns, but that pain means it's working. It's cleansing the wound. The dirt and grime are being washed away, and the healing process can start. If we don't clean the wound, if we don't put those kinds of the medicine on it to clean it out, you may miss the pain and the sting of that cleansing, but it means more pain and infection later on. It makes it so much worse. Pursuing peace in our relationship is like putting peroxide yeah. on a wound. It stings and it's uncomfortable. It's difficult and it's messy. But it will lead to healing. It'll lead to the health of our community. And it'll lead to a stronger unity that will allow us to do what God has called us to do more efficiently. So when I was on my world race, when we were in our countries on our smaller teams, we did something kind of radical. Um, we would, at the end of every day, we would gather as a team and we would have a team debrief. And we would, um, yeah, we would debrief the day. We would talk about how, what we loved seeing each other do. We were like, hey, John, you did this great thing earlier today, and I love seeing it. I love seeing you step into your calling and the gifts that God has given you. We would, we would talk about the, the things that we liked, uh, the, our highs for the day, but we would also talk about our lows. And if someone in my team hurt my feelings that day, or if something happened that caused a little bit of friction, we talked it out. We confronted it head on because... Um, Holding on to that frustration led to resentment. Hold, it, it, it could, it, we could not let that resentment fester or build because it would lead to disunity and affect our team's ministry. Because we would be focused more on the frustration from our teammate than doing what God had asked us to do. It also led to peace and safety in our team. We, our team became a place in a community where um, we could be vulnerable with one another and not worry about how the other team member was going to react. But it didn't come easy. It was not easy at first. It took time. It took intention. It took deference. It was bumpy, and it was messy, and it was sometimes very, very painful. But after a time... All of that mess and that pain gave way to something truly spectacular. <laughs> and it's something that I miss with every fiber of my being. There are things that someone in this room has done or said that has wounded you. And there are things that you have done or said that probably have wounded someone else. Because none of us are innocent. We all struggle. We're all human. But seeking the good of the community and pursuing peace means that we have to be humble enough to admit that we have caused pain. Whether it was by accident or on purpose. And we have to be humble enough to work through the process of reconciliation. So if you have been wounded by a brother or sister, be courageous and vulnerable and talk about it. And if you have hurt somebody, ask for forgiveness. Talk about it. Don't let this fester and simmer. If, you guys, if the worship team can come up. As a church, we have a mission. 
We are a team. We are a family, and we cannot do our job of being a life-giving community, serving those in need, making Jesus the main attraction, if we have tension or discord within our community or within our gathering. We have to pray for one another. We have to encourage each other. We have to ask for forgiveness. It is difficult to dislike someone you're praying for. It is very hard to dislike someone that you are actively praying for and seeking their good. We need to seek peace in our relationships. This means that both parties have to defer to the good of the other person. James 5, 16 through 17 says, The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Our joy, our unity, and our peace ultimately are found in the person of Jesus. Jesus, his joy was leading us to the presence of the Father. And we are unified in his death and resurrection and the forgiveness of our sins. And he pursued peace with us while we were still enemies with God. And if that is what Jesus has done for us, we are to follow him in the same way by finding joy and gathering together and moving into the presence of God. By building unity within our church community and pursuing peace in our relationships. Because the only way to come out of the deep, out of the despair, out of this rough season we've been in, is to move together and move as a unified community. Amen? Amen. So as Annika leads us in our last song, think about ascending together. Imagine all of us as a unified community linking arm in arm on a mission to gather as many people in Gresham as we can get and usher them into the presence of God. So if there is someone that you need to reconcile with, do it. Don't wait. Pursue peace and embrace the sting of healing. Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for this group of people. It is not by accident that you have put this group of people, these specific people in this gathering for this moment in time. Holy Spirit, you have led all of us here to hear your spirit, to seek healing, to love and encourage each other, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that we would find joy in gathering together. That we would be so glad to say, let's go into the presence of the Lord together. Let's pray together. Let's encourage one another. God, that every single person would walk into this gathering together, whether it's on Sunday afternoons, whether it's in Bible study, whether it's in any other way we gather, but we would be so overjoyed to be with one another and we would encourage one another and we would lift each other up in encouragement and prayer so that we could be unified. And I pray, Lord, that peace would be a marker of Generations Church. That people would walk into this gathering and see the joy and the love and the peace that's in this room, that's in this group of people, Lord. And that we could give up any pain, any wound, anything that we've ever done, Lord Jesus, we can give it to you and seek peace between you and us and and each other, Lord Jesus, so that we could do our mission of being a life-giving community. In the name of Jesus, amen.